There are many Australian animals that you don't hear about. They've been pushed aside and hidden from society by animal researchers and other animal societies, considered to be not worthy of being mentioned. In this video, I would like to introduce you to three such native Australian animals that live in the reserve I call my office. The bogle, a native bush rat, live in dense forests and burrow underground, usually under a fallen tree. It's rare to see them cross the trails. They prefer to be hidden in the undergrowth. The only time you will see them is if you look under fallen trees for their burrows then sit down and wait for them to come out. They're active during the day and at night. Their diet consists of fungus, grasses, fruits, seeds and insects. They're not considered to be climbers, but they are, especially when it comes to food. I have seen them climb trees up to three metres high. Bogles can be quite aggressive to their own kind. Damaged tails and torn ears are the result of fighting. These injuries help me to identify the individual. Bogles only live for about a year and a breeding pair can stay together until the end of their lives. Then their young take over the nesting site. The Bogle, an interesting character. A little bit bigger looking than the black rat, mainly because of its fur, sort of tends to fluff out a little bit. But they are very much individuals, very confident within themselves, don't take shit from any other animal that they tend to run across as they all use the similar tracks. They use the logs on the ground to get around from one area to another safely and through the thick grasses. Now, they, if a bird flies past them when they're out in the open, they will go and hide. Uh, they don't give you that feeling that they're a nervous animal, but they're cautious nevertheless. Interesting character, a very reasonably good climber. And I don't know why people haven't seen this in the past, because I see it a lot. Researchers don't mention it, they say they're just not known as a climber, but they do it, and they do it pretty well when it comes to food. So that's the bagel. Australia's swamp rat. Swamp rats look more like a guinea pig with a short tail than they do a rat. Their behaviour is similar as well, and they're also active through the day and the night. Swamp rats make extensive burrows underground. They also make tunnels through the vegetation to get to their food source. They eat stems of grasses and sages. Like the bogle, it's rarely seen running across the trails. Their lifespan is around three years. One female will own the burrow and she will aggressively defend it. When males have served their purpose, she will chase them away from the burrow. The swamp rat isn't considered to be a good climber, but they actually are quite highly skilled at climbing trees and shrubs. If you like guinea pigs, you'll love the swamp rat. Very similar in behavior, size as well. They're probably the size of a big guinea pig. And also their voice is very similar as well. The way they interact with each other is pretty much the same. They'll push each other around when it comes to food and try and hog it all themselves. Watching these two very young juvenile 
swamp rats. See the behaviour. The youngest one there, not all that old, but it ain't taking any shit from its sibling. It's going to get its fair share. It's entertaining to watch them and how they interact with other animals, which we'll have a look at a bit later on. Uh, and they're actually really good climbers, very acrobatic. I've uh, seen a lot. The agile antichinus is a small carnivorous marsupial. They eat insects, some fruits, and are quite partial to honey. And as their name suggests, they're quite the athlete when it comes to climbing trees and shrubs. Agiles prefer to nest in hollow trees or logs on the ground. Males only live for about 11 months. During the breeding season, males' testosterone levels rise and other chemicals flood their bodies. And in the end, this is what kills them. They desperately mate with as many females as they possibly can before their body gives out. Agiles can be seen running across the trails and climbing trees. Occasionally the Agile has contact with the Bogle and the Swamp Rat. They have no fear or tolerance for the Agile and they can kill them quite easily. But this doesn't deter the Agile when it comes to food. They will try all sorts of tactics to frighten the Bogle and the Swamp Rat off. Agile Antichinus, my passion, as my subscribers know. It, my channel is built on the Agile Antichinus. It's the reason why I uh, started the channel in the first place. They're amazing, amazing animal to study, full of character, and I have no idea why they aren't competing in the marketplace out there with koalas, kangaroos, all those sort of cuddly animals. Amazing little marsupial. It's absolutely captivated my, my whole uh, life at the minute. <laughs> it's a big part of it. You recognise the individual very quickly from the way they behave. I could go on and on about them. But another animal that just doesn't get looked at, pushed aside. I've heard it before from students that are learning to be a parks and lands officer, uh, work for Hillsville Sanctuary, you know, to go to those sort of places. When their instructor starts talking about the agile antichinus, the swamp rat, the bogle, they brush over them, especially the agile antichinus. Don't know why, but these people that I've talked to and talked to me about it, say that they were interested in them, they asked a few questions, and they were palmed off. And this isn't just one person, this is a few I've heard it from. Don't know, don't know the answer to that. Why? A lot of other strain animals are all in the same boat, they're pushed aside. Hope you enjoyed this little video and learned to bit yourself about animals that you don't normally see. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel and get more of this amazing stuff, hit my pretty little face just down there in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Hit the little bell, get, you'll get notification whenever I do anything else. If you want to go and have a look at all the stuff I've done in the past, click on my icon right here. You shouldn't be in the forest. Get out of here. I don't hate cats. 
I just don't want them in the reserve. They shouldn't be out in forests eating my friends. <laughs> an amazing animal in their own country, which is where they should go back to. We shouldn't have them in Australia. Being political, aren't I? If you want to go and have a look at my channel, click on the icon here. It'll take you there. I talk about all sorts of things to do with photography, photographing, filming in a forest environment. It's tough. There's lots to learn. And I can help you out in that area if you like. If you're going to have a browse, there's tons of stuff there for me doing little ditties like this. <sighs> Practicing at making wildlife doc documentaries, doing voiceovers, practicing there, all sorts of crazy things like that. Now just remember, if you don't do, you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife, and I'll catch you on the next one. My thanks to DJI for fixing the Osmo camera for me. Some reason, hyperlapse disappeared. They gave me a patch tool, reloaded the new firmware update, and we're all hunky-dory. Aren't you lucky? You're going to get some hyperlapse at the end of this video. Thanks for watching. See ya.